What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down four-star Oklahoma commit Jaquez Petaway and some of his route running. So we're going to be talking about some of the things he does really well off the line of scrimmage that you guys can apply to your game, some of the things he does great at the top of the route, which is why I think he is one of the top route runners in the class and one of the best receivers there is in the country. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to improve your skills on the field, we are now offering a four-week on-field wide receiver workout plan with all the specific drills and sets, reps, and video examples of each exercise you need to do on the field to improve your skills. So if you want a four-week daily schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. We'll definitely help you guys out. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first here, this is going to be a corner post. So this corner post, one of the main things that you got to do is sell this route at the top correctly. So a lot of people don't know how to sell a double move correctly, but Petaway does a great job of it. So anytime that you're working a post corner, a corner post, an out and up, a sluggo, any double move, that first break, there's so important that you do three specific things. So when you break to the corner, you want to make sure a lot of people just say, oh, you want to sell with the eyes. But at the end of the day, fellas, DBs are not supposed to be looking at your eyes. They're, they're supposed to be watching what? They're supposed to be looking at your hips, supposed to be reading your body language, and they are reading your stride. Okay, so now a lot of receivers just think that they can look back and they'll look back to the ball, but their shoulders, their hips are drifting upfield, giving the route away, and they will take choppy steps with their feet. You got to be able to do all three if you want separation every single time. So he does that. He breaks off of this cut. And now, main thing let's talk about, let's start from the ground up. Let's look at his strides. He doesn't take choppy strides. It's one, two, three. He is gaining ground for three full steps on the corner. On every single double move except for the example or the exception of maybe like a wheel route, it's usually three steps. You break on a sluggo, it's three steps. And then we back, go back up vertical. Post corner, it's three steps. So for those three steps, you have to gain ground and run in full stride. Because especially when a DB is off, and you're breaking this thing off in front of him, he's trying to, he's not looking at your legs, but he's reading the tempo of your stride. And if you're taking choppy steps, he will sit on this thing and expect a double move all day long. Now, another thing, DBs are supposed to be watching your body language. So if you guys are running this route, a lot of guys will break on this. They'll take the three steps, but their hip and shoulders are pointed towards the break. They give this thing away. They start to round it before the foot gets down. That's cheating it, fellas, and that's giving away the route. So you have to make sure hips and shoulders are committed, and we're running in full stride, which is what Petaway does a great job of. And then icing on the cake is the eyes to make it all look the same. So when you put the brakes on, we could get that DB sitting on the corner, and I can win on the post portion of this route. That is a textbook double move right there, and that is exactly how it should be ran when you're running this corner post from the outside spot. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Time. Great job with the inside release, working to restack, taking those three steps, and then winning on that corner post and finishing the play. So now, this is going to be a post route versus press coverage. So this is a great example. This is a, this is a really high-level route. I love this route from him because he does this kind of like hesitation release, reads the DB, and takes his release based on the info that the DB gave him. So anytime that you guys have like head up press, it is all about gathering info on this guy. How is he going to play you? What leverage is he going to keep? Where is he going to shade? And that allows me to do my, my release. So you could do like a split release in this case where you split your feet, or you could do something like this. Let's play at full speed. So he hesitates, sees that that DB shades to the outside. So fine, I'm going to take what he gives me and I'm going to take the inside release. So many wide receivers struggle with taking what the DB gives them. They automatically think that, oh, it's a post route. I have to take an inside release. Granted, he did. But a lot of times guys are afraid to take an outside release on a post route if this DB takes it away. So what Petaway does here is he does this kind of like hesitation release and this DB see how he shades to the outside. If he were to take the outside release here, this DB would get hands and squeeze him all the way to the sideline. So we have to take what he gives me. I split, I come to balance in my base. I see that he's taking away the outside. Okay, fine. I'm just going to react and take the inside. Your separation is won and lost at the top of the route, not off the line. Off the line, what's a DB's whole goal in press? To screw up timing, right? He's to screw up the timing with the quarterback so the quarterback has to move off of the read and go to somewhere else or he's sacked because he's holding the ball too long. End of the day, that's a DB's goal. But if we can just react sometimes off of what he gives me, then I keep timing. Now, if he had to run this post and it wasn't against press coverage head up and this DB was like inside shade more, probably go with a different release. I probably give him kind of a fake to the inside. I try to threaten his leverage and I'm comfortable taking the outside release. You just have to make sure on either route, inside or outside release, 
what do we need to do? Need to restack. And that is exactly what he does. Because now the mistake a lot of guys will make when they do this and this DB gives them the inside release, they'll just take off and run. They won't restack. They won't get skinny into this DB. But you have to understand, fellas, especially if you're a receiver who is trying to stand out at a college camp, trying to stand out at a showcase to some school, or just trying to impress guys on film, they have to see that you know how to run routes, right? So if you just come off the line and you just run to the middle and you just round off this break and you catch the ball on the opposite hash, not because the QB was late, but because you ran a poor route, that doesn't stand out. College coaches think, okay, he doesn't know how to get skinny into his routes. He doesn't know how to restack. And that's something that people look for, fellas. They look for those little details. So when he gets up into this break, I love how he gets back skinny. He's giving that QB a bigger window to hit him. If he just runs into it, that's not a big window. That's tough to get timing, but he's able to restack, get back over the top, get skinny into him so the QB has a bigger window. Now, granted, QB was a little bit late on this throw. That ball should be on him right now. But again, it's camp. It's you know not the most chemistry between quarterbacks and wide receivers, but that is exactly how you run that post route with the inside release. You have to give the move, react. Because he's in press coverage, head up. I react off of him. I take what he gives me. Keep timing with the QB. Let's get skinny. Give that QB space to make that throw. Now, one last thing before I play this full speed. I know it's a lot of info, but what if this DB's playing it well? What do you want to do? Do you just want to keep running? No. What do you think you should do? You should lean into him. So rather than if I can't restack, I use my upper body and I lean into this guy. He's hip to hip. I'm going to lean into him as I am running. Because when I lean into him and I make that break, I have so much momentum going outside that it's almost the same thing as pushing off without getting a call. As long as you don't extend and shove him in the back, it's just that's just route running. That's just breaking it off at the top of the break. So fellas, make sure we have a plan at the top of the route for inside release and for outside release on any given route, that's where your separation is won and lost. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. This is textbook right here from Petway. I love this rep. I love the restack and getting skinny. Just QB could put that ball on him a little bit sooner. So I want to talk about this last clip here. Um, just to showcase maybe, you know, situations, right? I, I talk about this just so you guys can understand um, different situations with different coverages, but he's going to be running. It looks kind of like a choice route here, but he comes off the line, takes this inside release, gives this like kind of shake and then wins on this like outside breaking route. I think it's more of a choice route. Now a choice route is a great man coverage beater, but you have to understand situations. So like maybe if you're running this like choice route and let's say you're like the second read, let's say the QB's looking at something like a post first and then you're the second read, that is when something like this would be completely fine. Where you maybe go, you break down, you give him this fake to the inside. It's almost like that like jerk route, if you will. Some people have probably seen that where it's like a you break to the whip, then you come back inside. This is more like maybe like a like a juke route. Some people call this a juke route. It's really more like a choice route. You have the choice to go inside or outside. I would say, I don't necessarily know what they called here, but we just have to know that you got to know the timing. You got to understand that, okay, this is a later read in the play. I could maybe take my time at the break point. I could break down. I can give him a fake outside, inside, then come back out. But if it's like a situation where it's quick, you're the first read, you're trying to get the ball, maybe you're running an out route, you just have to come up with something a little bit quicker. Maybe instead of me doing that and I have to run this out route, I maybe attack him to the inside with my release, I push back vertical, then I break it off because he's lined up inside shade. Or maybe he's lined up outside shade. I give him something off the line, I push up vertical, and then I snap down and throw by. But you got to have a plan for the different read you are on the play and just know how to get separation against that type of coverage. But just make sure, fellas, we have the high football IQ so when the actual game comes on, when the 11 on 11s comes on, or when it's 11 on 11, the bright lights are on, Friday nights, when it matters, not t-shirt and shorts, you have to have a plan that will get you open, but get you open efficiently. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Again, pretty good job getting separation. Great job selling the inside route on this choice and winning on that play. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to um, leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like some more information on our 28-day on-field wide receiver workout plan, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you guys on that. I'll see you guys next time.